G'day and welcome to another big edition of the RDFNL Footy Show. Thanks to One Time Delivery Solutions. Looking back on round 16, my name's Andy. I'm joined by Tara Murray from the Star Weekly. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're at the business end of the season now. Uh, the exciting time. Now, we had a few big games last week and, um, and a few that sort of had a massive impact on the final, but I'm going to jump straight to it. Romsey and Wallen, the game that... Uh, just determined it all, and you called it many, many weeks ago. It was, and I know there was quite a few people quite interested in that result. I know I was out at a Ballarat Football League match, and I was trying to listen to it on the radio, and then I was following the live scores because I wanted to know what was going on there. And in the end, it was running later than the Sunbury Wood End game. So from what I can gather, there was quite a few people on the phone at Sunbury to <laughs> at Romsey going, how long, how long, how long? But it, it ended up being a match that was probably worthy of a final in the end and it sort of, it, in the end it was a knockout final and Romsey got over the line. I think I said last week, Romsey Park is always a big factor for Romsey and in the end they got over the line that last quarter. I, I, I don't have the stats in front of me but I would say with Romsey's winning score that probably would have been one of their highest of the season, highest winning score of the season at that venue all, all year and that's uh, that's just due to the style of the games that have been played there. And it is and I think it's, they may have had a few higher scores against your lower ranked sides but a side yeah. that was in that top seven. So for them to do that they needed to and I think that's probably they needed to find a few avenues to go ahead of finals anyway so it's a good a good lead up for them. Matty Burkett and Jack O'Sullivan have been in some pretty good form in the midfield there for the Redbacks. It is. I think I think both um, Burkitts could be in contention for the Bowen medal. If not, they'll be definitely up there. They've both had really good seasons. And we're seeing Jack as someone who's come back to the competition this year and has really developed and taken that next step after playing in a premiership a couple of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and, and hats off to Dan Nolan, who has uh, officially retired uh, from his playing career over at Wallen and uh, a terrific servant of the competition in his brief stay over at Wallen and all the work that he's done to be able to get the club uh, into to being contenders again. And you look, he, he leaves it at the top of his game. He was still, I think, in the top five in the um, goal kickers for the league. So hopefully he stays on there as a coach there. He's done a lot of good work the last couple of years, and they've, they've got a lot to build on there. Hopefully someone can uh, sort of get in his ear and say, you sure you want to retire? You've got a lot left in you. But uh, no, we, we can dream. He's such a, a good asset to the game. So uh, unfortunately for Wallen, um, for a team, uh, if, we had, if we only had like a top eight, they would have certainly been a quality contender there. And if they had gotten the finals, look out, they would have caused a lot of damage. It is, and I think they'd be disappointed. They made finals last year, and to, it's probably a little bit of a step backwards this year. I think I think they had a stronger lineup than last year. Yeah. They probably did get a whole lot of new players, which was always going to take some time to settle. But in the end, not making finals, I think, is a disappointing result. Probably says more about the quality of the competition, I think, as well. The top seven have been quality standouts uh, so we've you know, the, the, the talent across the competition has uh, has strengthened I think so but they, even last year we, we had eight teams in it until the final round and you, you could say that summary kangaroos and Lancefield were unlucky to miss out last year so it was only it was only that really big final round win that got um, Wallen into into the final so you look there obviously there is a bit more talent across the side but at the same time it's still Disappointing. Says so a lot about where Roms are at as well. They've uh, to face Diggers and, and Wallen in the in the last few weeks heading into finals. Probably a good thing for them to get that good quality finals experience now that they're in there too. It is, and they've been the surprise packet this year. I think we said that early on that they've been really they shocked a lot of teams early on, and they've kept, kept that form pretty consistently across the season. I think they've won six out of their last eight. Their only losses have come against Riddle and Diggers Rest, and even the match against Diggers Rest last week they had their chances. So for them, it's probably good experience as well because they do have a really young side. Is how they will go in finals. They do have quite a few players still with premiership experience from a couple of years ago, but to get some of these young guys into that high-intensity football is only going to benefit them come this weekend and maybe a couple of weeks down the track as well. Certainly shaping up to be a, a good finals campaign from then. You mentioned the Sunbury Kangaroos before. They're in the finals now, and uh, they, they've got a little bit of form, just winning a few games of footy uh, at the business end of the year. I know they've recovered well from that uh, shock loss to Melton Central a few weeks ago. It is, and I think for the Sunbury Kangaroos, it took them a while to get it over the top of Wood End on the weekend. I think Wood End were determined to keep them out of finals and play for a little bit of pride themselves. And it was only sort of the last 15 um, minutes or so that they got the margin out to about the 30 points. I know they did kick two goals in the last two minutes. I, from what I gather, a Phil Lobb, um, one from the boundary from an impossible angle, and Mitch Farmer kicked one after the siren. So at that point when the game finished, they were only in the finals by 0.25%. So wow. they were pretty nervous there. And But in the end, they've, they've got in, and that's all you can ask for. Anything can happen now in these finals. And they've got Diggers Rest, who is a side that's not entering the finals on the best um, form. And I guess you look at Wood and Hesker as well. Their, uh, their performance the previous week against Rupert was pretty disappointing. So 
they have an improved effort while not being able to get the win was really good for them. It is. It is improved effort, but I think they're another team that will go out of this season disappointed with how um, they performed. I think they would have been looking at finals, mm-hmm. and they weren't anywhere near. At least I know for next year where they're at, where they need to uh, to get the. And I have, uh, I'm pretty confident that they'll, uh, they'll get a few... Uh, Missing puzzle pieces sort of fill in there and, uh, and be a stronger side uh, for next year. And uh, a game that uh, drew a, a bit of interest, but uh, on, on the school probably not so much. We had Macedon almost quite confidently and comfortably accounting for Diggers Rest. It is, but how much can we take out of this game? Yeah. That's the fact. I'd, looking at it, I'd say Diggers Rest was missing at least a quarter of their team. Yep. There was a few players injured the week before. Tommy Gleason's one, Jamie Lobb, who didn't play. I think they were expecting Matt Crowell back, and he was another one who wasn't named. So there's three there, and I think there was um, a, three or four others that were still missing. So you look at this time last year, Diggers Rest lost in the final round of the season and bounced back for final. So I don't think we take a lot out of that game. Obviously, it gives Mass and more confidence that they've beaten Diggers Rest twice this year. Diggers Rest are yet to beat Macedon, so yeah. you've got that confidence there. But obviously, we I looked at that and go, any other week that would be Matt game of the round but it was pretty disappointing the way it came with Diggers Rest only scoring I think was 16 points or something which is mm. their lowest score. Looking at the scores I've um, online, they only went back to 2012 and they haven't scored at least yeah. <laughs> since before then so it's been a number of years since they've put out that point. Score. But as you say, it's probably we wouldn't read too much into it. Just give a few of the other uh, guys a bit of a run on. Uh, Rupert's were heading into the finals campaign with a lot of confidence after a big win over Rockbank. No surprise there. Yeah. That was no surprise. It was just I expected Rock um, Rupert's would to have a big win there, and it was probably the they did exactly what they needed to. They they had plenty of goal kickers, and you look their t- um, two top goal kickers in Sean Hetherington and Tom Potter was like I think kick nine between them. So it's good to have them informed. They'll need them kicking goals come finals. Definitely yeah, right. And Melbourne Central's have finished the season on a high. I uh, had a pretty good run over the last few weeks, which is what we were expecting from them, from Sprowley and the team, after they took down Lansfield. I think big improvers at this season. I think they went from two wins to seven wins. So they ended up finishing in eighth spot. So that's a massive step up for them. And obviously, they've got their reserves in finals as well. So there's a lot of positives to come out of that club. And if they can get a couple more key fo- a couple of key forwards next year to add to that side, I think they'll be even be greater development next year. Yeah, certainly a lot to like of what's happening down at the Centrals. And the final game, uh, Riddle, uh, comfortable winners over Broughton. That was the game we said last week, we were 99.9% sure that Riddle was going to play finals. And I think they were 47 points up at quarter time or something like that. So that game was sort of already over and they'd already sort of um, sealed their final spot. So attention pretty quickly went away from that game. And they certainly shared the workload around on the scorefront as well. It is. I think um, they had 12 goal kickers, including eight players who kicked multiple goals. So they're starting to find quite a few different options up there forward. Certainly fantastic. Uh, great way to wrap up the uh, the home and away season thanks to on-time delivery solutions. We've certainly got a, a big week of finals coming up and uh, we'll be previewing each game separately later on the week. Tara, thanks so much for joining us here on the show. Look forward to catching you throughout the week. Thanks for having me.